My understanding was it was a working mill and right up until 1960s and then basically it was derelict, probably 50, 60 years until we've got involved in it. It's stayed empty, uh, hasn't had a use. John Spalden brought it with his partner about 14 years ago and we got involved in part of the loft development in 2010 and it was really derelict. We, uh, he got planning permission to turn this part of the mill, this side now, into three townhouses. We got involved with the development in the end of the summer, 2016. It basically started from taking the roof off, doing all the structural work to the roof, party walls, underpinning, but basically everything we touched was either rotten, just falling apart. It had so much water ingress, vandalism, all sorts really, it was such a shame. So we started underpinning first. We had some commercial scuba divers come in, do some underwater work at the back and remove the spillway, which was like a limestone apron that projects the water off the back of the building. And we uh, spoke to the Environment Agency. They gave us the work and permits to work within the river and do certain things. We completed the structural work ourselves. We then worked within the building, put all new floor structures in. Then we put reinforced floor structure on the ground floor of underfloor heating, damp-proof membranes, insulation. And then basically once the shelves were structurally sound and split up into three individual properties, we could then sort of start working on them individually. When you get involved in quite a unique project like this, I mean, I know myself for sort of 20 years in construction, we were doing something quite special. Not only are you working on a 400-year-old building, but it was like the jewel of Alsham. And so you're sort of working with the building, you want to try and retain all the character, the old beams, obviously all the wheel gearing. We've got to go in there, we've got to go under current regulations and legislation with building control, we've got to make it safe for fire, insulation purposes, etc. And so they're the compromises. It's trying to have that sort of respect for the building. Some of the features of the building it's got a large water wheel, stands about three metres high, nearly sort of 2.7 metres wide. It's a phenomenal feature. It's now off someone's kitchen. Uh, we restored the sluice gates, put in brand new automated gates. The wheel gear that worked from the shaft, that's now featuring someone's kitchen. We've had that glazed off. And then the gearing goes through another floor, which is someone's lounge, where they had the millstones. Within one building, we've created three properties and it's, it's phenomenal actually, you walk through all properties, how many individual features they've all got and how different they all are. It does make you proud when, when you get to the end of the project and you hear how happy people are and what an amazing job it is and that you get messages of the standard of work and then we look back at like photos from when we started to where we are now the level of work that we've got to, the standard of the finishing was, is so high. To be honest, yeah, it's breathtaking. It was a fantastic project to do, definitely.